I want to tell Mr. Gachagua, stop duping Kenyans. This country, Mr. Gachagua may be thinking that other, pa other people are not Kenyans. They are more Kenyans than the other. Mr. Gachagua must change. Uh, that octogenarian thinking style must now come to an end. As Nakuru Town West ODM Kingpin and the general of Nakuru Town West, we've seen even uh, the ranking of the president through the, the results that were released by Sinovet, saying that the performance of president is 55. The performance of deputy is, uh, is 47. And on the same analysis, Kenyans are saying out of 65% that the government is headed in the wrong trajectory. It is not adding up because the person who is leading the government that Kenyans are dissatisfied with is none other than the president, William Root. So if 65% have said that it is headed in the wrong direction, then what magic again can one say that it is... Hundred fifty-five percent. That to us is not adding up. The Kenyans had their desires for the government, and on the other hand, the government proposed what they were to do to Kenyans. Whatever they were to do to Kenyans to fulfill their promises, very few have been achieved. Like cost of living has skyrocketed, rocketed. Employment opportunities, majority of Kenyans who elected Ruto are now flying the country to other countries to seek for job opportunities because the government cannot create jobs for the citizens. So to us, the country is headed to the wrong direction and what we are asking, let the government not hide in the sand. Let the government not hide in the sand. Kenyans have a, a problem, a big problem, and I really sympathize with the people who are saying that the government is headed to the, the right direction. When people are leaving for other countries for job opportunities, when people are suffering, when people cannot meet basic needs, and here the person is saying the government is in order. The government would be in order if the life, the cost of living is down, but the cost of living is still high, and we are unable to make both ends meet. So to me, that analysis that was done was political. It wasn't the genuine position of what Kenyans think. Now, in the one year that we are rating the government, number one, let us take, for example, education sector. Majority of students cannot be able to even pay school fees because there is no money to pay. The cost of living cannot allow for even people to pay school fees. So, in the sector of education, we have a big problem. Number two, in the same sector of education, we want quality education and quality results. If you saw last year's performance, it was mad with irregularities. And as of now, we cannot distinguish who performed well and who did not perform well. Even when they were now interrogating the, 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 the education sector, the members of parliament, while, while interrogating the uh, education sector, they found there was, it was mad with massive irregularities. And therefore, we cannot claim that the, the, the country has a good educational system. Number two, even the program of uh, choosing which student is more poorer than the other. To me, that is a scam because the board that is placed there to choose can be manipulated easily. One with money will just go to that board and say, I want you to take this my child to this poor background child. And from there, if he has money, those people will be minting millions of money at the expense of poor Kenyans because a poor person cannot get money to influence that board. Oh, that is on education sector. On uh, cost of living, I've seen uh, uh, Deputy President Mr. Gadega Chagwa normally says Kenyans got uh, cheaper fertilizer and therefore cost of living will now be down.
I want to tell Mr. Gachagua, cost of living is not about uh, fertilizer. Cost of living is, are you able to even meet the basic needs? Not everybody in Kenya is a farmer. In Kenya, we have engineers who operate as engineers. We have doctors who are not farmers. We have uh, lawyers and other people. So not everybody in Kenya is a farmer. And for you to tell us that because uh, fertilizer has come, now the cost of living is gone, has gone down is a pure lie. Cost of living is, do I have money to meet the basic needs? And as we speak, people's pockets are empty. There is no money to help them purchase what they need to, for their basic needs. And therefore, Mr. Gachagua, stop duping Kenyans. Even as we speak now, if you go to the supermarket, see at Iunga Imekosa, there is plenty of flour in the supermarkets. But the only unfortunate thing is the ability to purchase that flour. And therefore, if we want to reduce cost of living, let people have money in their pocket so that at least they are able to purchase the basic needs. Number three, in terms of politics, or members of parliament and even other areas, on the appointments, or Kenya Kwanza, on the appointment basis, it is skewed towards a particular tribe. We've seen recent appointments in the ministries. You find even major tribes getting peanut in terms of appointments. We've seen in the recruitments of even KDF, other people came empty-handed without getting even one, a single slot. We saw employment in KRA. It was mad with the tribalism. We've seen almost all the appointments, other regions are left behind. So to us, that is not the face of Kenya we want. The law is clear that diverse communities must enjoy the resources of the country. And therefore, when you skew your appointment towards a particular direction, then you disservice even people who should also enjoy their services as taxpayers. That is on employment opportunities. If I was to rate the government, I would rather give them 25%. Or I would request President William Root to be very sensitive on his leadership. Let him not operate on cartels who normally feeds him with the wrong information. The ground is completely different. People's perception on the ground is different. So it is high time he should come to the ground to listen to the voices of the common man or else he will get a rude shock in 2027 because even as we speak now, Kenyans, we want proper reforms, especially the IBC. I heard Mr. Rigade Gachagwa talk of we are not going to touch on the uh, audit of, of the results of 2022. Mr. Gachagwa, the law is very clear that after every election, a forensic audit should be done on the past election from the time of procurement to the time election is done and even foster for the future or uh, arrangement on how it will be done and therefore when odm is asking about the audit of election they are talking within the confines of the law and therefore mr Rigade gachagua don't take kenya back to the dark days when people were being told to call a snake fish Hey, we are past that era. This time you cannot tell us that we are seeing this as snake and we call it fish. It can never happen. Let Kenyans be governed by the law. The law is clear. The audit of 2022 general election must be done as per the law and as the law dictates. And therefore, this country, Mr. Gachagwa, may be thinking that other, other people are not Kenyans. They are more Kenyans than the other. When you take oath of office, you take oath of office as a Kenyan and serving all Kenyans, regardless of their political party's affiliation, their religion, their race, and what other people. So you cannot claim that because you are there, you want to neglect other Kenyans because you are on the throne. That, to me, is wrong.
as a leader, you must embrace unity of the country by ensuring that it is all inclusive. You should not be bragging that because I'm the th on the throne, only my people will benefit. What about other Kenyans who are also paying taxes? Do we have to pay tax so that we, we, we are uh, neglected or we also have to recede our taxes because we are not part and parcel of the government? So to me, Mr. Gachagwe must change. Uh, that octogenarian thinking style must now come to an end. We are in an era where people are enlightened. 